in today's world, that is a hybrid world in terms of cloud. That some things are on the cloud and we get logs from and VPC flow logs, etc. And some things remain on prem. How does the how can I better leverage my Q reader to keep providing security in that hybrid space? And I want to mention the old saying that says it takes two to tango. You cannot do everything here or there. These two pieces need to interlock very well to dovetail with one another in order to catch the bad guys. And the most valuable thing from the curator perspective, at least from my point of view, is the amount of rules that it has for catching real time. No need to do searches. and uh, uh, Because the problem with security led by searches is that you need to know what you are searching for in order to have an effective search. But when you are under attack, you most of the time do not know what to search for. So it is best to have a real time engine that uh, correlates the events that they are being received and their logs and flows and those that logic of those rules we are seeing mines in here having my demo system almost a thousand of them and these are not all uh, played alone so if we want to see the intersection of these two or this tango between AWS and, and stop and print perhaps we can show that by looking at the rules that work with events uh, from AWS and let, if we want to select something that is very on-prem perhaps we can select for example Sysmon which I like uh, quite a bit so if we look at the rules that work with these two groups we see that there are more than 200 of those we see in the beginning these AWS ones you know and these are all things that are detected uh, by uh, by QReader coming from AWS if we scroll down couple of pages we see you know these are things are windows related this happen on prem uh, so and let's not forget about that everything on these rules plays along very nicely with the miter attack framework and here we can see in my demo system what's the coverage that i have and this is a very good way uh, of making sure that you have a methodology for raising your own bar you can see the tactic and the technique that you want to improve. You see whether you have some coverage or, or you, you don't. And you want to see what log sources and what rules, what type of technology do I need to cover those holes and make my security better every day. Let's see an example of this thing. So here we have, we're in the offenses tab where, the, you know, the offenses are just a short story that combines a lot of things together, 100,000 here almost 2,000 a year and and those things are combined and put together because they when the events came the logic of the rule trigger finding things that are worth investigating and they are being put together or indexed by a property in this particular case was the username these others are the source IP this one is with destination IP so instead of curator sending you let's say that 14 or 24 more uh, logs or flows comes well, if this destination IP is uh, part of those, then they are going to be added into uh, this particular event. And whatever rules are applicable will contribute to this offense. We will not be opening a new one. Let's see one that is already open. We see that offense uh, 129 that has been indexed by username. That's the user ID, our shire. Uh, 100,000 events we see the events I when I replay those all those events uh, for for this video and we see here that the inside all the rules that fire in this particular case are actually being put together seven rules contributed to this offense we didn't send you a hundred thousand of these or even seven type of that no no they are indexed by the same user I name let's put them all together and tell you about it and we can see these things in here Hmm. First of all, this one calls my attention, and I have a dedicated video that de describes the Golden Samuel attack. But this is particularly bad for cloud premises. You see, when you have a cloud premise, you don't send your users and put a direct your directory into AWS or Azure. No, what you do is that you federate those. So when anyone needs to go into AWS, they go to, for example, if you have a Windows system, you, they go to the, your Active Directory Federation system, or ADFS, uh, and request a SAML assertion, 
that would be digitally signed, and then you present that one into AWS, and the AWS lets you in because they, they have been federated. What this attack uh, is, uh, and saw a tremendous resurgence with the uh, Solar Winds attack, in which the Active Directory environments were compromised, is that they gave the bad guys the, the ability to mint or print their own SAML assertions. So the, the attackers were going straight into federated uh, premises. Uh, and got in without any 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 issue. Well, can you detect those by just looking at the logs in the federation? No, because to the federation this looks valid, legit. You know, it's a valid certificate, uh, uh, SAML session digitally signed. So all is good. But Curita knows better because Curita knows, as I said before, that every logs that it received from, for example, AWS indicating that somebody logged in or presented a SAML session has to be preceded by logs that indicate that the person went into ADFS and requested a SAML session to go there. <laughs> and in this particular case, that did not happen. The guy went straight there and that's what that rule fired. If we look at all the rules in here, we see, for example, this one is uh, very telling, right? Somebody from my logs on the cloud, I see that somebody uh, received an email with an attachment from a span sender. And look what was in the attachment. There was a Word document and launch a command shell. That's not good. Uh, and this was, uh, you know, uh, also we see that the guy, when, when he went into that premise, launched a bunch of EC2 instances, probably to do Bitcoin mining and have you pay the bill. And... Um, here we see that uh, this one fire because uh -huh, probably the good guys and the bad guys log in into the same AWS account. Very telling. API calls from Cali. This is an amateur guy, but you know this is not good. Somebody went into an S3 bucket and dumped a, a backup database. That's not good, right? So, okay, in a at a glance I can see if Things that happen on the cloud and uh, things that happen in here, I can see them all together. Also, we get advisor telling me here, well, you know what? Based on the toxicity of the IOCs involved in this offense, and based on the type of training you have provided me by providing this feedback, what is important for a hospital might not be as important for a manufacturing company or a financial institution, etc. So advisor learns what's important for you and based on those two things, the toxicity, the relevance and the and what you have trained it about, they say that this is is unlikely that this will be a false positive. You better investigate this one. We also see here the MITRE attack and techniques that we mentioned before, all those seven offenses together put all these uh, tactics and techniques. It's very interesting. But let's actually see this graphically because this can be very interesting. When we look at this graphically, and I need to reduce the amount of data here, there's too much of it, we see that all those events are presented in a summary here in which we see the ID of the guy. This is Ronnie Shire. We know from that user ID. And this is particularly the UBA that gets the Active Directory that knows the name of the user, even though I only saw in the logs the user ID. This is a server that is involved into this. There's a workstation, there's some IPs and some hash that was part in the, of those, those events. That's probably from an EDR technology or maybe from even Sysmon, who knows? I, 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 can, I don't need to see the, those details right now. But uh, there are some things that are color red. And what that means is that this IP is malicious. How do you normally do that? Well, you play the silly game of, you know, okay, whatever, I go into my logs, see the logs, copy the, the IP address, paste it into VirusTotal, see what it is, read here, there, there. No need to do that. Because Advisor has a corpus of knowledge that knows a lot about bad IOCs out there. And is fed by the X-Force, by VirusTotal, by FireEye, by, you know, there's a great deal of... Uh, threat intelligence sources that advisor is fed with. And, and it immediately tells you what is bad. And if you want to see the details, you can actually click in it and, and see the details of that, but, you know, if, if so you want to. So that, that's good. That gives me a good summary. But the stuff gets even better when you bring the blue in. You see there's a little bit of blue here. And we saw some blue here. Let me zoom in from this place. 
What this blue stuff is, these are IOCs that are not part of your offense at all. These are related to your offense. And I like to make an analogy here because uh, all the IOCs and uh, have some relationship with one another. The same thing that you and I, viewers, are, are related maybe two, three degrees of separation, maybe more. And that's what Facebook has exploited so well. Uh, so Advisor is very aware of the relationship between all those IOCs. And it's coming back telling me, you know, based on that IP, for example, hmm, I see all these different IOCs that has a level of toxicity and relevance to these particular IOCs that you presented me in your offense that I want to tell you about. And this is actually good because you either manually or automatically can export those and feed your curator tables that your rules so well use. Aha! By doing so, now you know that if in the next week somebody clicks on any one of these IOCs, you are going to get an offense that fire because your, your tables are preloaded with these things because there's a relationship among them. And that's good. But that represents a problem. What happens if next week somebody touches this IOC, this, uh, IOC, this IP. How will I know one week from now that that other offense that will open next week, because whatever, it says that it's indexed on, on source IP or any other custom property. Uh, because if it's from the user ID, it will be added to this one. But if it's not, the user ID will be indexed by, as I said before, the source IP or the destination IP in this, ca in this case, it will open a new offense. How do I know that the two of them are related? That's very hard. And, and you may not even remember, or it might be a different SOC guy who analyzes the two offenses. So, hmm. And that's what Curator is, Advisor is so good on the green. What this green stuff is, is after Advisor has found all the blue, it goes back and performs one heck of a search automatically. You don't need to do your searches. You don't need to build searches. and You need to be a master on searches. But it goes ahead and, and, and does a search in your curator system looking for all the blue, all the gray, and all the green, all the, uh, the the blue and the gray stuff, and your reference set, your tables, and see whether I find anything that has any relationship with that. And it actually goes comes back and says, well, you know, now that you ask, guess what? This IP that was part of your offense is actually related to this other offense. And you can actually click in this offense and understand it. And even then, in a case that this offense has already been closed, it finds that relationship and tells you, you know, these things are related. This can be a big time saver and can really tell you uh, easily how to do the investigation. So at this point, we may want to investigate this Ronnie Shire guy. You know, what is the guy is doing? So best way is probably go into, into the UBA, in which from the behavioral standpoint, the UBA rules will add risk and will monitor everything that Ronnie is saying. Let's actually dive in into Ronnie's uh, data. That's the Active Directory data on Ronnie. And we see the all the use cases that has some risk associated with it. Okay, We see all the offenses that have been related to Ronnie in here. That's actually kind of good. You can actually dive in, and I don't want to make this video, it's already getting way too long. And you can dive in. But notice that there's also the machine learning aspect of it. And I don't have the model well loaded in here, but you see that my system was learning that this is the normal behavior. Basically, I was doing nothing with Ronnie. And, uh, and all of a sudden, I was when I was launching the attacks, the model that it has about the things that Ronnie does with this, with in this particular case with uh, the total activities that he has aggregated activity has been way you know exceeded in here. This is an anomaly. This, is this is this really Ronnie? Has his credential has been compromised? Is this the grunted and planting to live? You know, so and and there are plenty and I've done several videos on machine learning, so there are plenty of models that you can actually do that. Now I'm going to keep this video, uh, I'm going to stop it over here and then in part two of this one we're going to continue with the investigation of this and the resolution of this particular incident in this uh, hybrid cloud environment.